Kinky Friends. Okay, so um, I had posted a couple pictures on Instagram of the coloring ink testing book from Well Appointed Desk and Skylab Letterpress. And uh, someone asked if I could show kind of what I do to play with the new ink. I've laid out um, my usual supplies and I thought I would just quickly go through it and show you what I do to play with new inks. So we have on the bottom here, there's a whole bunch of pens. There are some um, additional supplies. I'll go through all of this shortly. And then up there is some paper. Okay, so here I, I have a couple of these pens here. Now this isn't what I use every single time, but here's an example of what I'd like to use. The first one here is the Pilot Falcon. This is the metal version. It has a semi-flexible soft fine nib. This is nice because you can get a bit of line variation so you can see what it looks like, your ink will look like with um, an extra wet application as well as with some flex. So that is one. Here is a Pelican M101N in bright red. This just has a 14 karat gold broad nib. This one is nice because it's a bit of a soft nib. It also gives a bit of line variation so you can also see what it looks like in a wet application here. But I also feel that this is a very usable nib for everyday writing. So if you want a accurate representation of what the ink might look like, this is a nice option. This is a new pen I have here. This is the Osprey Pens Milano. And in it is a titanium Zebra G dip nib insert. So this one gives some major flex. And this, is, to be honest, this one is more fun to just play with because realistically you're not gonna be writing um, you know, at work or at school with a nib like this. But it's a lot of fun to play with and really show off what the ink can look like. Next, I have an um, Enso Piuma fountain pen. I hope I got that pronunciation right. This one has an extra fine titanium nib. Uh, this is a very wet writer and um, it's also fairly springy. So you will find some line variation. So this is just, a, oh, there we go. Let's see if that'll show. There we go. It's a bit out of focus, but I'll show you later in more detail. It's um, also a nice option, I would say comparable to this, uh, the Falcon for, for a bit of line variation. Here I have a Franklin Christoph Model 31 Omnis in the pure puree finish. And okay, I know this is not supposed to be about the pen, but this is a truly gorgeous pen. This has an 18 karat gold double broad nib. So, um, Personally, I do use double broads and triple broads for regular writing. I know not everyone does, but um, this one I would not say is super gushing wet or super broad. It's a nice broad, like it's just a generous broad. And um, I think this is a nice representation of ink as well. So I'll show that one in a little more detail. This is the Classic Pens LB5 and I have a uh, Nagahara King Eagle nib on it. So this one, I know a lot of people make fun of me for having this because I don't use it, you know, for writing characters. And of course, who on earth would use a nib like this on a daily basis? I'll tell you who, crazy people like me, that's who. So I really enjoy using this one for um, hand lettering and florist writing. It's also, you can also write on the tip of it to get a really fine line. So I'll show that in a bit of action later. This is another pen that I enjoy inking up when I have a new ink. Uh, here's another Franklin Kristoff. Um, this one has an 18 karat gold medium cursive italic nib. This one is nice because I definitely use this one as a daily writer. And as you can see right now, it's eyedropper. So this is a, also a fun way to see how your ink will look in your pen. Some people don't care what it looks like, but if you like clear pens, you are probably the kind of person that does care. Here's another Franklin Kristoff, the Model 20 uh, in Maya Blue. This one has a steel nib. It's their stub italic gradient nib grind. Um, this is not one of the Masayama grinds. This one is done by uh, Jim Rouse. Rouse? I am sorry if I mispronounced that and butchered your name. But uh, it's great. It's a really nice, super smooth steel, and it gives a bit of um, a bit of a feeling of what it could look like again with a a broad writer, but not a absurdly not an absurdly broad writer. So of course I have three Franklin Kristoffs here. Um, this one I got a while ago, and these ones are two recent ones for review. But um, I really like them because they can all be eyedroppered, so that works out really well for me. 
Uh, here is, this one's kind of silly, um, it's my Namiki Yukari, but I have um, a number 10, I believe? Yeah, number 10 Pilot uh, Falcon nib on it, so it's not the same as the Pilot Falcon. I know, that's confusing. Um, okay, so here is the actual Falcon, and this is the FA nib. So it's much longer, it has some cutouts, which gives some nice line variation. So that is another option I use for playing with ink. But this is a standard setup I have, so it's always set up like this, and I actually do use it like this. Um, and last but not least in the pen lineup, I have just a good old Pilot Parallel. This is the 6mm size, I have it eyedroppered, and um, this is really nice because you can write on the corners, you can write with the flat plate, uh, you can blend inks using another Pilot Parallel. It's just a lot of fun, and I really enjoy testing inks with this. Um, over on the side here, I have just a water brush. Um, there's no water in it right now, but I'll just kind of dip it into the ink and play around with it. Um, it's great if you're an artist because you can use this for like wa water, what is it called? Wash, water, color wash? Color wash, that's what it is. Um, just a little pipette. Um, I usually just suck it up, suck up some ink and uh, for this is how I make these drops. So that's one of the supplies that I have that is useful. Um, here's just a tiny little cup of water, also useful. Um, this is a dip nib holder with a Browse Blue Pumpkin nib. And I think... Yeah, I was just trying to see if I could show you the name. Uh, it's also called the Leonard... Um, uh, shoot, Copper Plate nib, I think. Anyway, if you look for a Browse Steno, you'll find it. So I use that because it's a great nib just for writing on the on paper and I had I had one open here that I had written on and I there so I use it up here right there uh, the other thing I have is actually something I stole from Stevens just a tiny little sword and um, it has a strange quote in Dutch on it that I can't remember like something about helping the animals uh, help dear in leaf to something anyway it's really funny because it's like this hilarious quote about saving animals, but it's a sword. So anyway, I use this for smearing ink around. Okay, so that is the pen and supplies. Oh, wait, one more supply. Uh, just a converter. Surprisingly, if you suck up ink and then just smear it around, it gives you a nice, really wet application, but it's just another option if you don't have a cute little sword. And last but not least, I have a loop. This is just the Belomo 10X loop, and it's a great loop, I think. Mine has a little thing for a lanyard for super nerds like me. Uh, other things you will need, paper towel. Um, I'm kind of weird and I like to not waste too much like items like this. So I actually will use this till it's basically saturated and soaked. Then I'll leave it to dry and reuse it over and over and over until it starts falling apart. I also have the blotting paper. I've been using this for like two years. I got, I got a pack from Bureau Direct like two years ago and it's a pack of 10 of the, um, uh, let me see, Girbin blotting sheets. And I think it was like 10, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 10, but I used like three of them and they're all still in use and this is what they look like and they're amazing. So if you need something to suck up your ink, these are good. Now for paper, I have a Rhodia number 16 dot pad. Um, you don't have to use a dot pad. I don't use the R paper because it's super slick. So for this kind of stuff, I prefer something that's just not as coated, but um, it is fountain pen friendly. So that is one thing. Um, another thing I have, I'll, I'll cover this last. Another thing I have is the um, Baron Fake Confidant Notebook. Uh, yes, I spilled ink on it in case you're wondering, that is Mont Blanc Unicef Blue. But I use it because it's slightly toothy, but in my experience, it's fountain pen friendly. I mean, you can see that pretty well. There's no feathering or anything. and. There is some bleed through, but I don't mind with a saturated sample like this. So I use the Confidant also in Dot Grid. And I also have a Hobonichi. And um, I use it because it is Tomoe River. And yes, this is how I use mine because I'm, I'm, I'm not good at using this thing. So um, I'm terrible at planning and terrible at organizing, but I love inking in it. So I usually put like currently ink lists and stuff in it, like, like this kind of stuff. and do some watercolor when I attempt. And anyway, I really enjoy it, but as you can see, the sheen is like unreal. These are super saturated, and uh, I do time lapses of drying ink in here. So you've probably seen those videos before. 
Um, so this is my other option. So I have um, quite a few paper options. There's this, the um, the Baron Fig, and then Rhodia. And last but not least, this is a new edition, the uh, coloring ink testing book. This was recently launched by the Well Appointed Desk and um, in collaboration with Skylab Letterpress because these little things are actually letterpress and it's amazing. So yeah, there's a whole ton of paper in here. I think it tells you how many sheets. Yeah, 100 sheets, um, 100 pound paper. Now, as you can see, it is super fountain pen friendly. Um, these are some of the ways I test inks. Um, I put it in the pen or in another pen or in another pen. And so it shows off the shading, like some of the, some of the things you might see with that particular ink. Uh, these are more realistic uses for the inks. Um, there's some more. Uh, this is done with a folded nib, which I don't have in my pile here, but I would put it just direct, the nib directly into this. When I, when I actually sew this in use, I'll add the folded nib in. And um, it's like super sheeny, zero bleed through, minimal show through. It's unreal. So here's what I do. I, uh, I do splats and I do... God, I love this ink. Um, there's a whole bunch of splats. Uh, I just kind of smear it across the bottom. Sometimes I test it actually in a pen, so that's that was what with this. So that's just regular writing. There's with a little bit of pressure, and there's just what it looks like if it's smeared around a bit. Um, I also have this. I love this color as well. Uh, with this, I used um, I think I used my glass dip pen for this. So I wrote this out and then I smeared it around and you can see it's like super gorgeous shading and stuff. So of course, I mean, if you're writing with an extra fine nib, it's probably not gonna look like this, but this is why I like to do a couple things with the inks, like to see what it will look like on different paper with different writing instruments and uh, how it looks when it's dry. So here's some other options, like major sheen. Just a, a swab here. This was done with a brush pen. I don't use Q-tips because I don't like to throw them out. That's done with a dip pen. And I have one in here that I followed uh, Lee Reyes' idea um, where she basically just curled her card up and dipped it directly into the ink bottle. And of course, you know what? The best way to find that is to flip it over. Here, this one. So she just like curls the card and just dips it right into the bottle, which makes a super sexy little thing here. So that's a really nice way of testing your ink as well. But again, not going to be representative of what it'll look like with a, you know, a drier writer. So um, yeah, this is only half full and I am going to need like 20 more of these because I'm obsessed with them. So that is just an overview of what I use. Now I will kind of go into individual items and show you how I do it. And uh, hopefully you're having a fun time. I'm going to use Noodler's Apache Sunset, the Franklin Christoph Midnight Emerald, and uh, the Franklin, Franklin Christoph Tenebris Purpuratum. And this one has the little eyedropper top, so you can get either kind. You can, of course, you can use any ink you want. But um, okay, see you soon. Okay, I'm actually just back for a quick update um, of a few more things that I thought would be handy that I use sometimes, and I just didn't think of adding them in the first place. Okay, this is the Ink Miser. Um, it's just a tiny little inkwell. You can also just use an ink sample vial, but this is nice because it goes right down to the bottom. So if you're running low on an ink sample, this is a nice way to get the last little bits out. So there's one thing. Um, this is a glass nib pen. This is the Wink pen. Uh, it's very useful. I find it writes pretty well. You can ink the pen if you want or not. You don't have to. Uh, you can also just use like a regular glass pen, glass dip glass nib pen. Uh, I was recently using this one because I actually did ink it. So there's one more thing. Um, here, oh, I'm sorry. Here is the folded nib I was recently using. I bought a few more, but I have not used them yet. And you can see they all have different shapes. So you're gonna get different, different writing, different looks out of them. So uh, those are some more. This is another, I think this is called an auto, a ruling pen, an automatic pen. Um, but you can see you can adjust the plates, so I guess it's similar to the Pilot Parallel, and this is another one, similar idea. Um, yeah, that's it. That's my addition. Okay, we'll do these stuff in action now. Here's that Pelican M101N. Uh, this is just Schaefer 
script red. So I'll write the ink out. I'll do some loops with the pen. There you go. Very simple. Um, here with that Pilot Falcon, you can do the same thing. This is uh, Yamabuto ink. But here you'll see you get more variation, so you get a bit more shading down at the bottom. And from what I, from what I recall, you can actually go like this too. Uh, that might rub off, rub off your rhodium plating, so if you are afraid about that, don't do this. I am not. If it happens, oh well. Um, this is not inked right now, but this is that Zebra G-nib. So, okay, it has a little bit of ink left, but um, I'll ink it up before showing it a little more. Here is the uh, King Eagle nib. You can write at a higher angle. Write hello. You can write on the back. Um, hello. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of scribbling. That's what that looks like. Here is that Franklin Kristoff. This has really nice variation. It's just like such a clean cursive italic. This is a Masayama grind, of course. Here is that double broad, that 18 karat. I know, I'm just writing random things. Nothing makes sense. None of this is actually useful things that I'm writing. But that's just the way it is. You have to live with it. Here's the Model 20. That's that uh, Stub Itali gradient nib. It has slightly stubby. It's really nice. It's not a super round writer, so if you prefer something with just a touch of variation, that's really good. Um, here's that FA nib. Um, although, okay, I haven't inked this. Anyway, sorry. Um, okay. It's a super wet writer. Okay, I'm trying to do this through my camera, so it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, in case you're wondering why I'm missing the cap. Here's the Pilot Parallel. This one's a lot of fun, because you can... I mean, that's like wild lines, but you can also do this. And it's like this like tiny baby line. And last but not least... I'm not sure I should give away my, my secret, but here's what I do. That's what I do for ink samples and uh, ink reviews. Okay, now I've made a mess. There's that. So I'm going to wrap this one up and move on to the next page. So I'm just going to put some in. Oh, that looks so delicious. I'm going to put some in there. And then I'm just going to leave the pipette over there because I'm probably going to use it again in just a few minutes. Okay, so... One thing we can do is just dip that nib directly into there, kind of wipe some of the ink off. So you get like super broad lines. And that's okay with me. I kind of like that. Um, what we got next? We have the dip, the browse nib. So that's something else you can do. Uh, next up, we have that like funny automatic pen. Actually, I'm not sure that's gonna fit in there. No, no. So I'm gonna have to open the ink bottle here. Sorry. I mean, you can. Oh wait, I think I have it too close. No, I don't. Never mind. That is way wetter. May way more wet, of course. So um, you can make it a bit drier by turning the knob. It's, that's the wrong way. There we go. And um, it's wetter, but of course, I mean, sorry, it's it's not as wet, but of course now there's no ink left. So anyway, you don't need to see the details. It's more so just the idea of how it works. Um, here's my converter. So you can just kind of smear the ink around like that. Then you get a, a saturated sample, but you see what it is. And the last thing was the tiny, oh, the tiny little... Uh, this is the other line pen. I think I have that too broad now. Let me see. Oh, 
sorry, that, that's a really giant space. Anyway, that's another option. I'm still learning how to use this one. I'm not the greatest, so please don't laugh at me. And I'm sure you will laugh anyway. And the other thing is that little sword. So you can go like this. Just put this down and just kind of smear it around. So it gives you an idea of like major shading. And I think that's it for these things, except for the brush. Hi. So this is much lighter. Clearly not as saturated as over here. So, I mean, that gives you a nice idea as well. But you can also use the brush, like, to load up the ink and then give you some extra wetness, depending on what you want. So, it's also a good way to blend inks because you can now dip it into there and get some kind of, yeah, stuff like that. So, okay. Um, I'll show you next on on the other notebooks, what other things you can play with. Okay, now I'm just gonna show you how I do those little drops. The drops are super easy, of course. So I just take ink, you can also take it out of the bottle. Um, I raise my hand to get the nice, like, I'm probably like a foot, out, a foot away here. It makes accuracy a little difficult, but uh, it gives you a nice splat, because if you're too close, you get a little, like a blob, see? It doesn't have that nice, little like starburst. So, oops, okay, that was a bit messy. Um, this will take a while to dry, so um, let's not want it dry. You can already see what's happening here is there's like this pooling of the ink, so you get this nice saturated, mildly saturated shading. I think it's a nice representation of what you can see with this ink. But again, if you're using an extra fine nib, you're not gonna see this per se. So the first one here is just ink splats, and I like this because it gives a very saturated look with any sheen, if there is any. So I'm going to take the Apache Sunset that I have sitting right here. Uh, this can be messy, so you might want to you might want to uh, keep some paper towel on hand. You can also do it on a blotting sheet or like newspaper or something. I like to make it a little messy because it makes it more natural looking. And then I will take, if I don't have this inked up in a pen, uh, usually I do, but if I don't, because like right now I don't, I will just write the name of the ink somewhere. So in this case, just in the corner, just so that I know what it is. And of course now I have to pick it up. Usually I do this on a piece of um, uh, like just scrap paper or something so I don't, if I splatter everywhere, it's not a really big deal, but, um, okay, so I've gotten that. So I'll just put that off to the side to dry, and I'll do a final shot at the end, because this is going to take forever to dry. Um, noodlers, in general, takes a really long time, so let me just uh, grab something here and put it on. Okay, so that is the um, splats. Next up, I have just like a folded nib written bit so we can do that for the folded nib i'm just using this one um, this is actually a really wide nib it might not be the best choice but there we go again i'm doing this through my camera so my lines are not the best lines i have ever done Okay, so that's horrendous, but it does the job. You get the picture. Just put that aside to dry as well. Next we have uh, just some handwriting. So for this, I'm going to use just the pen. Uh, I'm not using Apache Sunset for this because I want to use this pen that I have. Actually, yeah. 
Oh my god, sorry about the noise in the background. I'm gonna have to move this part. Okay, so this is... This is... Franklin... Christoph. Um, the purple is called Tenebris Purpuratum. Uh, sorry about the voicing in the background. Ugh, so annoying. Uh, that's what you get when you live with people. So there's that. Next up, I have... This is the one I do where I have it in a pen already. So I'm going to do the same pen that I just did because it is already inked. So I do something like, what can you see, sorry. So I'll write the pen, model, or name. This is the model 31, and then I'll make a note of the nib because the nib itself makes a big difference. This is a double broad, and then the ink is Franklin Christoph. I probably should have picked an ink that was not so long because now you get to sit here and watch me do this. Okay, so then for the ending, like the bottom part, this is what I'll do. I'll just make a line. You can use an eyedropper. Um, you can use the... You can open this up. Take the converter and just drop some drops there. But what I'm going to do is actually just use the ink bottle itself because it has this handy dandy little dude. Ooh, that was awkward. So I'll um Yeah, sorry. That that's just a casualty. So I'll just put like a drop on, maybe uh, just a touch more. And I usually take that little knife. So this little guy, and I'll just spread it around. I'm trying to do this through again through my camera, so my aim is really bad. The nice thing about this is you get a really nice, um, like a really nice swab of the ink itself. Okay, this is really hard to do with one hand, holding the thing and looking through the camera because my depth perception is apparently really messed up. Okay, so that's a pretty um, decent swab of it. I'll leave that. You could put more if you want, but I'm going to leave it as it is because next up we have a giant swab. That's another thing you could just put the ink name itself and then swab it. So let's just put the ink name. I'm going to do the Apache Sunset again. this I also do that line just so I have like a rough idea where to not put it okay so for here I'm going to pick up this card with great struggle I'm going to suck up a couple drops of ink and I'll just kind of just like squiggle it down the middle again this is a really noodle is super wet so um, I'll just use the folded nib to smear it around you can use whatever you want um, I would have used that little sword, but I had just dipped it in the Franklin Kristoff ink, so I don't want to mess up this swab with a different color. You can use anything, though, honestly. You can even use, like, a butter knife. Um, you can use your finger. The only thing is, if you're using your fingers, um, if you're not, if you're doing a bunch of inks at the same time, you're gonna probably, like, cross-contaminate the actual color. So, there is one. And if you want to add like an extra saturated look, you could just take a couple extra drops and just put them in like a corner. There, you can see it. It's right there. 
and you can move it around. Very exciting. Okay, so we'll put this to dry. Um, next up, we have this kind of swab. So this I used the water brush for. So for this, I'm going to use this pen again. ink does not like dippers. But it works. So the brush is this one. Um, this can be a bit of a hideous swab. It depends on how you do it. That's hideous. I probably should use a bigger brush because this is going to take a while. But you get to watch. That's pretty much it. It's not very exciting. But the nice thing about this is you can um, you can see some shading really well. So at the bottom it's much lighter and in the middle it's much more deep orange. And again, if you want to give it some extra saturation, you can just dab a few extra, you know, like brush drops on. So that's pretty much that. That's very easy. We will move that aside and keep going. Um, okay, that one I've already done. And this one is um, the dip, like the dip card. So for this, of course the, the bottle depends, like it depends what you're using. It makes it easier. I'm going to use the Franklin Kristoff bottle, like the Midnight Emerald, because it has a wider mouth than the Noodlers. So I had something inked with Midnight Emerald. Let me just grab it. Or partially inked. It was dipped, so I'm just going to dip it for now. Um, just to write the name of the ink in place. So this is... I could have just inked it, but I didn't. Okay, cap that. So what you'll do is you just take the card. Now again, this is not my invention. I give all credit to Lee Reyes because this was her genius idea. So you just basically curl it up so it could fit into the, um, into the bottle and you just dip it. Now I'm gonna try and show you, you can see, oh, I went too far, but you can see right there how far in the thing is so you can just take it out I just kind of like blob it a bit to get it nice and saturated and maybe get some extra ink on there oh yeah so there you go look at that now the thing for this one of course it's double-sided so to let this one dry is a little more work I'm just gonna cap this well it's not perfect it's just a little messier um, you can hold it for a second like seriously it's so gorgeous this color is amazing okay I'm just gonna run down the swabs that I just did the ink play so this one was done with a dip dip and um, I, I just dripped a couple of drops on with a pipette and smeared it around this one was with the pen and this one is just another one where you just write directly onto the page uh, onto the card because with using a fountain pen because it gives you a pretty accurate view of what your ink is going to look like because of course here this ink looks much different than it does here much more shading a lot more variation variation here um, this is the one that I did with the brush this is one of my favorites that's done with a dip nib but this is where I just curled up the thing and just stuck it directly into the bottle so it does both sides, but it gets um, really nice saturation. You get some sheen if the ink has sheen. Mm -hmm. This one is done with a folded pen and it's still wet and it's been a long time. So this ink takes a long time to dry as does many other noodlers. And this is just the ink splats and it's still soaking, but I just wanted to show it to you so that I could wrap everything up. Um, 
you can see here that this is almost red. You get some more orange in this one. So by doing a couple different things, you get to see more options. Now, of course, you can use the other side of the cards. I just didn't just because I didn't want to wait for them to dry in between everything. So this is currently what my book looks like while experimenting. Um, it's pretty fun. So hopefully I've given you a couple ideas of things you can do with your inks and what supplies you have. Also, if you are like me and you're constantly looking for excuses to get new supplies, well, now you have an excuse. You could say you need it for your ink book. I hope this was fun and I look forward to seeing your pictures.